Okay, my name is J.R. Little. I'm the Global Head of Innovation for a media agency called Kara. Uh, in media agencies, what we do is our clients who are big brands like Mondelez or Coca-Cola will give us their marketing and advertising money and we will advise them on what to do with it and where to put it. Um, and we'll advise them in more um, effective ways of reaching consumers through their communications or advertising, but also more efficient ways. So we're trying to reach the consumer and save them money. And that's what we do. And often we work with, say, a creative agency, um, which is sort of the traditional idea of an ad agency, to come up with the ideas and the placements of the ads that you and I see on a daily basis. Um, we are always trying to help uh, the brands we work with to reach the consumers they want to reach. Um, if they're trying to build their reputation, if they're trying to make people aware of a new product, if they're trying to steal um, allegiance away from a competitor brand, we're trying to make sure the consumers see them, know about them, have affinity to them, and can easily access them. And we do that through all of the media placements that we provide for them. And that might be a billboard or an out of home on the side of a building. It might be an ad in a newspaper. It might be a Facebook post. It might be a YouTube pre-roll. Uh, it could be many things. But we're trying to make sure the consumer sees and is aware of this brand that we're helping. There are some challenges when you're trying to build a brand globally. I think um, I'll speak first just about all brands face when they're trying to expand beyond their markets. And then maybe I'll speak a bit more about emerging markets. So first, um, brands will always see um, uh, challenges when they're trying to compete on a global level against local brands. Because a brand has to have some consistencies across the world and across markets, but then they have to be hyper relevant to say just the UK or just any given country. And there will always be some smaller, more agile, more um, underdog, aggressive local brands that they have to think about. So you have to always find that balance of how can we have some global process um, and some global efficiencies, but yet the nimbleness to compete on a country to country level. Um, that's quite challenging. Another thing would be that there's some, in the world of uh, communications, advertising and media, there are some things that are consistent across the world and some things that are not. So Facebook is in a lot of countries around the world, but it's not in some countries. So you can form a global partnership with Facebook, but then what are you going to do in countries where it's not as strong, like China or Korea or somewhere else? Now, with emerging markets, what I think is really interesting here is the assumption would be that emerging markets are somehow not as far, or somehow not as advanced. But I think what we're seeing in advertising, in digital, um, in media, is that emerging markets are actually leapfrogging in some areas. So, um, especially in mobile, especially in mobile, because you know your advanced markets um, or complex markets have been um, slowly evolving with mobile. But then you have countries in Africa that just suddenly got great mobile penetration, great um, you know, um, receptivity, and ha are now rolling out amazing mobile businesses or mobile advertising that has taken other countries many years to accomplish. Um, I can think specifically about some of the stuff I've seen with WhatsApp in Africa, but have not seen with WhatsApp in, say, the UK or the US. Um, the other thing about emerging markets that I think people should be aware of is that not everyone you interact with, with clients or with even colleagues, are going to be at the same level. You'll have some people who are highly 
um, aware of digital communications, of uh, contemporary ways to talk about and build and market a brand, but then you may have some people that are still very dependent on the traditional way they've always done things. I think in emerging markets, you, you have more of a, um, a great difference. You, you have more of both sides. Whereas in markets like say the US or the UK, everyone's pretty much on the same level or quickly catching up to the same level. So consumer products, um, do, you, do you have one positioning proposition, value proposition, do you have one message globally or do you have nuances locally? And sadly, the short answer is, it depends. And I, but I do always think there is a local nuance. Um, and I have experienced myself in working with some brands, um, and I'll give you one specific example. With Mondelez, there is a brand, it's called Halls. It's, um, people in the US will think it's for their throat, whereas people in Brazil may think of it like a candy. Um, and it's the same product, but the markets have just thought about it differently and used it differently. Um, and so it works well to be sold during the cold and flu season in America, but it also works well to sell it as a breath mint or a candy in Brazil. So you have to have those nuances. Also, uh, flavor nuances, even in Europe. The um, Nordic and Northern countries tend to like, in candies and gums, they tend to like mints um, and ten, tend to like peppermint. Um, whereas the more Southern Europe countries like fruity flavors. So you have to consider that if you have a consumer product. Um, I do think there has to be some consistency because the world's becoming very globalized. Um, even if we don't, even if we remove the fact that people travel a lot, even if we remove that fact, people also can access the same videos online. Uh, so if you saw something cool that happened in America with halls, then, you know, if you're in Brazil or if you're in uh, another South American country, you could also see that content. So you have to sort of stay close to the same idea, but there do need to be local nuances. Um, I'll, one more example, we have um, uh, with General Motors, car brand, we have in the UK, we have a brand called Vauxhall, whereas right across the water in mainland Europe and Germany, the brand is called Opel. And this is there because there's some history to those names. Now the products are exactly the same. But the thinking in the mind of the consumer and the history with that brand Opel and with that brand Vauxhall still has value. And so you want to keep those nuances there. I think it's important to look at the government and see if it is involved in um, companies and investing in companies and involved in what would have traditionally been the private marketplace or not. Because if we look at, say, some of the, uh, the Emirates and the United Arab Emirates, um, you know, Emirates Airlines, uh, Etihad, um, many of the developments, many of the hotels, um, many of these uh, things that to the public may look like they are just a private practice are actually a part of the state. And that is something quite unique um, to places like Singapore, places like the UAE, um, very unique. Whereas when you're in a place like the United Kingdom or uh, the US, uh, most people would be very aware if the government had involvement in the brand that they were interacting with on the street. And so when I'm working with, say, uh, the Abu Dhabi government, I am helping them to brand and market one of the businesses that they just so happen to own or have significant investment in. Might be a property developer, might be an airline, might be um, something similar to that. Um, 
but the average person on the street may not even know that that was a government related business. Um, whereas I don't, I think that's rare in the US and the UK. So when you're working with governments, um, again, no governments are going to be the same. So um, when you're working with governments, there are some things to be aware of. Um, and I don't know the right words to describe this, but you actually have to ask yourself, is this a government that operates more like a business and a corporation? Or is this a government that truly is more about civic duty and helping uh, people to live better lives? Now, of course, both should be helping people to live better lives, but working with a government, say, like Singapore or like Dubai or any of the United Arab Emirates, there is a blur between sort of moving into um, what traditionally would have been private spaces, like private business, um, and, and a blur between the civic and the private. Um, whereas if you're working with, say, the UK government or the US government, it may be much more of a strict separation between private business and civic duty, um, if you will. Um, in terms of what you bring to the table, in terms of the solutions you bring, it's still the same. You're still trying to solve a problem with whatever the tools are at your disposal. Um, I just think that there's going to be some governments in the world who want that type of advice and that type of knowledge. Um, and there will be others who um, are not accustomed to that. And that's a very foreign thing. And you may have to help them understand it better. So ironically, some of the um, countries that are non-Western are probably more um, keen and more astute at contemporary modern branding marketing practices than maybe even some of the Western ones. I mean, I think ethics and social responsibility are extremely important and should be absolutely the focus of every day at work. Um, and this is becoming even more important as we sort of enter into this hyper digital, hyper mobile, hyper social media uh, age, whatever this is. Um, it's still sort of forming itself. but. You know, within seconds, I can find out anything I want to find out about a product, about a corporation. I can quickly understand with a search what an ingredient is, what that does to my body. I can check my wearable to see if something is healthy or not healthy. Or um, I think consumers have so much control now uh, to find out, to interrogate, to um, learn about brands and the companies behind the brands, that all businesses have to take uh, ethics and social responsibility very seriously. And not just as a sort of, we want to look like we do good, because consumers can see through that so quickly. They actually have to do good. Um, and I know, uh, as you're aware, I work with uh, some brands that some could say are slightly controversial with high sugar ingredients like snacking and chocolate and candies and gums and sodas. Um, but I actually don't feel compromised in that. And I feel that our clients are doing the right thing by sort of speaking very openly to consumers that life is about enjoying a lot of things in moderation. Um, and no, you probably shouldn't be having, you know, candy for breakfast and um, sugary soda pop for lunch and candy and soda pop for dinner. It's about moderation. Um, but those same brands that kind of are most um, top of mind, uh, the soda brands or the candy brands or the snack food brands, the same brands that are critiqued a lot also have healthy options. They also have other options uh, for consumers. Um, I personally have a Diet Coke every day or every other day. And um, I think that's okay. Um, so I think there is responsibility. I think companies are just now 
learning how to maybe even be more responsible. Um, but we have plenty of case studies um, proving that it is very important now. Um, I would reference one case study that I think sort of changed the paradigm, and that was BP, when BP branded itself as Beyond Petroleum. Um, I think this is about 2007, 2008. And they started to sort of try to represent themselves as being more um, green. But then the oil spill happened off the Gulf, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, which was quite a horrible situation. And the dissonance or the difference between that um, horrible accident and that press story and what their branding was saying was so great. And it was too great. Um, and uh, there was a lot of backlash. Um, and I think ever since then, um, all marketers are a little bit more aware. Um, of being authentic, transparent, honest, um, but also um, more aware that they can't expect to tell consumers what the consumer should believe because the consumer can find out for themselves.